Hello and welcome. We are nice and live. And the reason why you're here is that you are sick and tired of losing points either on your math assessments or on your math assignments. And you're like, look, I spent all this time studying. I spent all this time like breaking things down and I took the test and I was like, yes, I'm definitely gonna get an A on this. And then you get the test back and you're like, what just happened? Sounds familiar? Yes, it always happens. And then when you look at your work, you realize that was a dumb mistake. Like I know that a negative times a negative is a positive. Why did I write negative? And, and wait, how is this wrong? And I know I can do this. So I just figured, especially after I've been tutoring for a while and been teaching for a while, it seems like a lot of students, especially if they're taking that pre-algebra all the way up to college algebra, everyone's making the same mistakes. And it's always the top three. No matter what age, it's always those three that they always make mistakes. Well, my name is Audrey Codner Gibson, and yes, I will be your host on this lovely webinar because I want you to no longer lose any points because of these small common mistakes. So we really want to kind of reach out and I want to, from the very beginning, I want to welcome you guys because I'm going live not only through Facebook, but also through YouTube. I'm still waiting for LinkedIn. LinkedIn, if you're listening, hey, 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 <laughs> let's get it going because I really want to get on. So I have a couple people that's on here. Miss Donna, thank you so much. I love her daughter, Tatiana. I am definitely, I can't see you, but I know you're here, girl. And also we got Robert in the house. Hey to you, Robert. We're gonna get this done and popping. Okay. <laughs> so definitely wanna get more into what are these three mistakes and then how are we gonna fix it? Because right now, I feel like once you watch this webinar, once it's done, you'll be able to fix it on your own. All right. So let me hide a little bit of this and let me hide my name because I can only be conceited for so long. Right. And we're going to actually get ourselves situated. So I would like to go by the three common mistakes and drop it as a list as number three on my list, which a lot of people always get. It's those integer operations. So what I mean by integer operations, I'm looking at the plus, I'm looking at the minus, I'm looking at multiplication, and I'm also looking at division. And all of a sudden, I am not seeing my thing. So we're going to keep it going because you know what? It's going to happen. Um, but I want to go through a couple of items to see if I can share my screen. There it is. All right. So I'm going to make it nice and large and in charge. So the three common mistakes that those algebra students, regardless, pre-algebra, algebra one, algebra two, also college algebra, what they are making and how we are going to fix them. So integer operations, right off the bat, a lot of us already understand 10 plus three right? Two whole numbers. We know what 10 represents. We know what three represents, and we can easily get our answer of 13. And we also can figure out, I'm just going to bring this down to myself. We got that seven minus five. And everyone knows seven minus five, that will give me my two. But what happens if I flip the script? What happens if I say negative five plus seven? This is what my students always say. Oh, it's negative 12. And I'll say, no. And they're like, no, it is because you're adding, but that's not what's happening here. So if I draw a number line as best I can, so say we're starting here at negative five. So we got four, three, two, one, and zero. One, two, three, four, and coming up to five. We're counting by ones. If I start here at negative five, and I'm going positive seven, so I'm adding seven. That means I'm going to the right. So if I go to the right, one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven. I'm stopping here at two. So does it look like I'm really adding? No, I'm not continuing down on the negative end of the spectrum. I'm actually going in the opposite direction. So I always like to say, when you have two different signs, you're really subtracting. One sign is negative, which is my five, and the other is positive, which is my seven. But this is the one that really gets a lot of people. We have three minus a negative five. All my students will tell me my answer is negative eight. Each and every single one. And then I ask, why is that negative eight? Well, if I start at three, I'm like, yes. And then I'm subtracting, I'm like, yes, subtracting five. Because they like to write it like this, three with a long minus sign and then five. Because what they're seeing is both the minus and the negative sign as one entity, which in fact, it's two separate things. Notice what I did. I put parentheses around that negative five. So what I'm saying is negative five is his own number and three is his own number, but the operation is gonna be minus. So when you see it and you are subtracting a negative number, one thing that you could do is put parentheses around the negative five, you know, so you can see the separation of the minus and negative. But minusing a negative, it's almost like you're about to walk out the door and then all of a sudden, like, oh, I forgot my keys. Let me go back. So I'm ready, ready to leave the door. Then I had to go back, get my keys, and now I'm coming back outside. So I'm like doing what's called a double take, okay? Not really dancing, but it can happen. So what's happening here is when you minus a negative, it's the same as when you're multiplying. When you multiply a negative times a negative, everybody can always tell me the rule. It's going to be positive. So it's really going to be three plus five. And what's three plus five? That's going to be a positive eight. Okay. So I started at three. I was going in the negative direction, but now they want me to switch up to go into the opposite direction. So when you minus a negative, you have to turn it to a positive. That is key. A lot of students make that mistake. And I love to see this one. I'm being, no. <laughs> All right, so let's try something a little more advanced. So if you are in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2, you're going to have something like this with the 3x minus the 7x plus 9. So now, if you're in middle school for a while, a lot of people, this is one thing I'm going to actually do as another live stream is to talk about why people struggle with algebra, okay? So this is one of the reasons why. When people have for six, seven years have been learning that X is representing multiplication, but once you get into algebra one, X represents a variable. So multiplication sign and variables world is two separate things. So usually a lot of people will read this, oh, negative three times negative seven times plus nine. No. In this case, my X's, they're also called variables. They're unknown. So what I can do in this case, I'm just using them as pairs. So I'm kind of speaking to my higher grade kids. So I have a negative three minus seven. So when I'm minusing, they're the same exact sign. When you minus a negative, they're the same. So that means both of them are the same. So that means I'm adding and then I'm keeping the sign. Which gives me my final solution. So when we're looking at this, if I have a minus plus a positive, when they're opposite signs, my answer is going to be the sign of my largest one, but I'm really subtracting, vice versa, okay? But when the signs are the same, when you minus plus a negative, right? Or when I minus a negative, they're the same. So you're really adding, okay? Same signs, you add, 
opposite signs, you subtract, okay? Multiplication and division, everyone knows. If the signs are the same, so if you have addition times addition, if you have a negative times a negative, they're all going to give you a positive answer. If I do opposites, like a negative times a positive or vice versa, my answer is always going to be negative. So the same thing happens with division. If the signs are the same, my answer is going to be positive. If my signs are different, my answer is going to be negative. And it seems like a lot of students usually get the multiplication and division. It's just the addition and subtraction we really got to think about. All right. So that was number three. <laughs> We're going to get that. The next one is going to be exponents. This brings a little shiver up my spine. <laughs> So before I go into this, let me see if anybody has any type of questions before I go all kinds of crazy with us as soon as I can get out. All right, definitely want to keep. So let's see if anyone here has any questions. No, nope, it doesn't seem like anyone has any questions. If you do, do not hesitate, okay? Because all of this is being sponsored by ACG Map Tutoring. That is me. Okay, I'm definitely building confidence and making connections to every person step by step. So right now, Ms. Donna, Mr. Robert, are we having any questions or are we just following along? All right, well, we're going to keep on moving. So we talked about the integer operations. Now we're going to speak a little bit about exponents. Let's see if I can go back to where we were. Yep. So let's take a look at exponents. What is an exponent? Now, you have a base. You have a couple things. This one right here, this is your base. The number that is raised, that is like raised to a power, that's your exponent. So you have a base and you have an exponent. The job of an exponent is to tell you how many times you need to multiply that base to itself. So for example, if I said two to the third power or two cubed, that means I'm multiplying that base of two three times. So then I'll have two times two, which gives me four. And then four times two gives me eight. So eight to the third power or eight Cube, sorry, two to the third power or two cube is going to give me eight. So the job of the exponent is to tell you how many times you need to multiply that base. But there are some properties, there are some rules that needs to be applied. And trust me, every single class, every time I got this two to the third power, people want to say six. Ready? It's not six. Stop it, okay? You're not multiplying the base to the exponent. The exponent is telling you how many times you're multiplying that base to itself. So we're going to take a look at six different properties. So one of the properties deals with when you're multiplying, you have to have one, the same bases. And when you do, you're going to add the exponents. So for example, I have x raised to the a and x raised to the b. When I have the same bases, because they're x's, I can add those exponents. So for example, if I had x to the fifth times x squared, one of the ways to look at it is if I do it as like an extended form, right? So if I have x to the fifth, that means I'm multiplying that base of x five times. Then for the x to the second, that means I'm multiplying that base to itself twice. How many x's do you see here? You have seven of them. So that means I have seven, the power of seven. So x raised to the seventh. All I had to do was add the five 
and the two, that's how I got my X to the seven. Okay? So eventually you can do the extended form or you can just simply, when they're the same bases, you can add those exponents. So if I gave you, I'm going to put it over here, 2X times 2Y. Are those twos exponents? They are not. So that means, and plus look at the bases. I got an X and I got a Y. We don't have the same base. So we can't do any of this adding the exponents. What I will do here is I will multiply what's called my coefficients. So two times two, that will give me four. And then what's left is going to be my X, Y. So if they have the same base, you add the exponents only when you're multiplying. But if they don't have the same base, you can't multiply or you can't add the exponents, but you do multiply the coefficients. So let's try another one. So if I had two X to the fourth, I'll just stick with the X's, right? Times X to the six. Are my bases the same? Which they are. But yes, there's a two that's here. That's a coefficient. But guess what? I can just bring the two over. But that means I have X raised to the 10th power. And that's my answer. Okay? So when you're multiplying, they have the same bases, you add the exponents. But now... What's happening here? We have a fraction. And right away, I know you're freaking out, but you don't really need to freak out. Because when you are dividing, when you see a fraction, it's just another way of dividing, okay? So when you see this fraction form, all you're doing is when you're dividing, you're going to do the opposite of addition, which is subtraction. So I'm going to subtract the exponent of my numerator by the exponent of my denominator, or the other way around. So if I said that I had x to the fifth over x cubed, this is the same as saying x raised to the five minus three, because I am subtracting my exponents, which gives me simply x squared. That's it, okay? So when you're dividing, you subtract your exponents if they have the same base. So if I need to be a little technical, just going to do one more. So I have 8x to the 7th, y to the ninth over 4x, y to the 5th. Coefficients, which is my 8 and my 4. I'm going to divide those two. So 8 divided by 4 gives me 2. But my exponents with the same bases, I'm going to subtract those. So I have x to the 7th over x. Now here, I don't see anything. There's no number there. Here's the thing. It's always assumed to be a 1. If you don't see an exponent, it's always assumed to be a 1. So it's really 7 minus 1, which gives me x to the 6th power. Now look at your y's. You got y to the ninth divided by y to the 5th. So it's going to be 9 minus 5, which gives me 4. So my solution for this one is going to be 2x to the 6th, y to the 4th. So adding is when we multiply and they have the same base, subtracting those exponents when you have the same base and you're dividing. So I know there's going to be like, all right, I think I got it. But then, of course, I'm going to throw you for another curve. Now we have an exponent being raised to an exponent. What's different with this one? So this one, we actually have an exponent, a parenthesis, and an exponent. So we have a power being raised to a power. So when you see this, you're actually multiplying your exponents. 
All right, so this is what's happening, if I may. If I said x squared is raised to the third power, I am telling myself that I am multiplying that x squared to itself three times. So now, since I'm multiplying, I'm going to add the exponents. So two plus two gives me four, and four plus two gives me six. And if you take a notice, if I just multiplied these two, two times three, wouldn't that also give me six? Uh, all right. So for the most part, instead of you extending everything out, it's just giving you a shorter way to get to your answer a lot quicker. But this is the only time that you're multiplying your exponents, okay? When it comes down to this extended form right here, I'm not doing two times two gives me four and four times two gives me eight. No, okay? It's only happening when you see an exponent, a parenthesis, and an exponent. All right, so let's try another one. So we have three x cubed times y, and it's going to be raised to the second power. So everything in this parenthesis is being raised to the second power. So that means the three is being raised to the second power, the x cubed is being raised to the second power, and the y is being raised to the second power. The part that everyone messes up on is they forget to square the leading coefficient or they forget to square the three. So everything, so if you think of it this way, you're with the five of your friends, you have a pack of gum, it has like, I don't know, six pieces of gum in there, right? So there's all five of you, you and five friends. So six of you, everybody should be able to get a piece of gum, right? So you hand it out, to four of your friends. What do you think? Four friends and you sitting there chomping on gum. What do you think the last person is gonna do? He or she's gonna feel some type of way about it because why does everybody else get gum and I don't get gum, <laughs> right? So that's why when you distribute, you wanna to distribute to everybody. Everybody wanna get an equal opportunity or an equal chance of doing it. So now let's simplify. So three squared. 3 squared is the same as saying 3 times 3 because I'm multiplying that base of 3 two times, which gives me a 9. x cubed raised to the second power. When it's 3 times 2, that gives me x to the sixth. y raised to the what? To the first power. If I don't see anything, it's to the first power. So 1 times... One times two is two, so that gives me y squared. This is my solution. A lot of people would say three x to the six, y to the second, because they understand the properties of the exponents, but they always forget to raise the three or whatever the leading coefficient is, okay? So this is very similar to the other thing, but it just mixes up the power being raised to a power and fractions. Mix them up at the same time. So if I said 2x over y, and I want to raise that to the second power, that means everything inside that parenthesis is being raised to the second power. So that means the 2 is being raised to the second power, the x is being raised to the second power, and the y is being raised to the second power. Okay, everything is being raised to the second power inside that parenthesis. So now two squared is the same as saying two times two, which gives me four. Then we bring my x squared over my y squared. Now, x and y, two different bases. So I can't break it down any further. If that y was an x, of course, we can break it down some more, but it's not. All right, so, so far, this is basically it. The next part is the tricky one. You have to pay attention to this one. So many people get this wrong. So now, when you have a negative exponent, 
you cannot leave a negative exponent in your answer. Every teacher known to man will mark it wrong. You might have a nice teacher that might give you partial credit, but most of us, we will mark the whole thing wrong, okay? So when you have a negative exponent, you have to do what's called the reciprocal. You have to flip it. You need to make it positive. By your action of flipping is making your exponent positive. So let's say we have x to the third power over x to the fifth. Now, if I do what I normally do is division, I'm going to subtract my exponents. So that means I got x raised to the negative second power or squared. But I can't leave a negative exponent because this is what's happened. Watch. Your numerator is x to the third, right? So that means you have x times x times x in your numerator. In your denominator, it's x to the fifth. So that means you have x times x times x times x times x. Through division, a number being divided by itself will give you one. So that's why a lot of teachers would say they cancel out. So these two pair up, these two pair up, and those pair up. What's left? What's left is your two x's, or your x times x, which is in the denominator. So that would be your x squared. Since we got one times one times one, one times one gives me one times one is one. So now my solution is going to be one over x squared. So this is why we say if you get a negative exponent, it needs to drop. It's either going to drop low or it's going to drop high. Think of your dance moves, right? So it's either you're going to go down to the ground or you're going to have to ride it on up, okay? <laughs> so if I said that we had... Um, x to negative third over one or one over that that means this negative exponent has to go to the numerator so that will give me x cubed so if the negative is in the denominator it's going to be positive as it goes in the numerator if it's negative in the numerator that means it's going to be positive going into the denominator okay you have to flip them in order to make them positive. And then the last one, which is my favorite, anything raised to the zero power is not zero. That is the biggest mistake that everyone always makes. We always have to have a start to something. Everything in life, there's always a start. There's a beginning. There's an end, there's a middle, there's this, but there's always a start to something. So anything raised to the zero power is one, okay? So if I had a problem and it had everything, so it had like negative four, x to the fifth, five, z to the eighth, p squared, q, you know, negative 12, <laughs> And this whole entire thing is raised to the zero power. My solution to that is one. I don't have to do anything that's inside the parenthesis or bracket or brace. Anything raised to the zero power, if it has something around it and it's raised to the zero power, boom, automatically it's one. It always reminds me when I was in college as an undergrad and I had to take a math course and it was finals. And this teacher like literally had one problem and it was on the board. It started at one end of the room all the way to the side of the other end of the room. It had fractions in it, radicals, negative exponents, decimals, complex numbers, ra rational numbers, everything you could possibly think of, squares, cubes, the fifth, sine, cosine. He just threw everything in there, right? But I noticed there was a parenthesis in the beginning. After you follow this ever long problem, there was a parenthesis at the end and it was all raised to the zero power. So guess what? All of that foolishness didn't have to do. It just equals one.
I know. I was done in a couple minutes. People were like, how'd you get done so quickly? I'm like, because it was equal to one. <laughs> so all of that, that's how it came about. All right, so let me unshare for a moment. That was a lot, but those are the things that we constantly keep saying. So I'm going to keep all this and let's go back. That's the one thing about this, it's constantly going back and forth. So how are we doing here? <laughs> okay, I think everyone's doing all right. So, so far we haven't had too many comments. Okay, we're doing all right. If we're not, please let me know. Don't forget, if you have anything, go ahead and type any kind of question or any kind of comment in that chat. Okay, as I said, I'm going to explore it once in a while just to make sure you're doing all right because I know I'm definitely zooming on through this. All right? Okay. So we did integer operations. Positive, negative, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. We also looked at those exponents. And there's a lot of rules. And I know right now I'm just kind of zooming on through everything. But the last one is the kicker. So much that it called national news. Like it just basically stopped everyone's processing and caused so much craziness. I'm talking about number one, order of operations. Yes, order of operations where everybody was basically losing their mind. This is a snippet of what was being displayed off of Facebook. It made national news. Like a lot of people were just like, man, I like this person right here. Man, I feel slow. <laughs> the whole world's confused because everybody was trying to figure out what was the answer to this? You know, was the answer 16 or was it one? I had students that I haven't seen since the beginning of time. My phone was blowing up. <laughs> I'm just like, what is this? Oh, they're like, what's the answer? What's the answer? What's the answer? And I'm like, well, dude, I taught you like 10 years ago. You should know the answer. And they're like, really? Really? And I'm like, okay. After a while, I was like, look, I really need to settle this. I even submitted a small video to uh, Fox News and to a couple other places because it really made national news. And it all comes down to PEMDAS. Who knew? Who knew PEMDAS was going to stop the whole entire world? <laughs> but it did. So I'm going to put an end officially to all of this. So let's get it started. So the original problem was 8 divided by 2 times 2 plus 2. And we want to know if the answer is 16 or 1. So if you're unfamiliar with PEMDAS or if you're from Canada, I know instead of the P, a lot of people had the B. All right. So I'm going to put a slash for the B because, you know, just because we live in the States doesn't mean we can't be international. Let's do it. So you have your parentheses or your brackets. Then comes your exponent. Then is either multiplication or division. Then addition and subtraction. This is the part that everybody forgets. When it comes to multiplication and division, it always depends on what comes first from left to right. Same thing with addition and subtraction, from left to right, okay? So first thing, I'm taking a look. I could do what's inside the parentheses was two plus two. So that gives me four. I'm going to keep it in the parentheses because once you get into algebra one, parentheses will mean that multiplication. So I'm bringing everything down. So we're done with that. We don't have any exponents. So exponents, we're done with that. Here's the key. From left to right, I'm either doing multiplication or division. Here's your left and here's your right. Okay. What operation comes first? Your eight divided by two. I know I can hear the moans like my window is closed, but I can still hear the, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
So we have eight divided by two, that gives me four. Then I'm bringing down my parenthesis of four. So I don't have any other addition or subtraction. I still got my multiplication. So the answer is 16, okay? Yes, from left to right, okay? So I hope I put, a, I hope I put this to bed. Like seriously, if I wanna break the internet, let's break it. Because your answer for this particular problem is 16, all right? So if I do it again, let me just kind of come in here. Let me erase all this fun stuff and I'll just reset it. So we either do in the parentheses or the bracket. We have exponents, multiplication, division from left to right. <laughs> Addition or subtraction from left to right. <laughs> now we have our problem. So we got 15 divided by 3, I'll put it this way, times 5 minus 4 squared. And I really feel for right now, my dot is multiplication, especially for my pre-algebra students, because eventually x is no longer going to represent multiplication. It's coming. So, parentheses. We don't have any parentheses. We don't have any brackets. That's done. Exponent. We have one exponent, which is 4 squared, which gives me 16. So, that's done. Everything else is coming on down. So, now, multiplication or division is the next thing up from, there you go, left to right. So, here's my left. Here is my right. So what comes first? This 15 divided by three, which gives me five. So I bring everything else down. So now from left to right, what comes next? Multiplication. So that's that five times five, which gives me 25 minus 16. So 25 minus 16, that will give me my niner. All right, so those were the three most common, the thing that would get every single teacher known the man. <sighs> Hives, <laughs> going through all kinds of therapy. Yeah, just going through stuff, just completely going through things. All right, so work on those step by step. Here's the key, just go through it slowly. You go through a step by step, you break it down into small chunks, and you'll be okay. All right? But if you look at it as one big problem and try to rush through it, it's going to cause some headache later on. And that's what gets you. When you're taking a test, any kind of test, any kind of homework assignment, anything, I know a lot of people say check your work, and a lot of people don't. Okay? But take a moment, look over it. Walk yourself through it, not just visually, but also say it out loud. Because if you can say it, you can teach it. If you can teach it, you understand it. So if you ever get to a point that, you know what, this was kind of cool. I would love to see more of this, or I would love for you to help me out with like quadratic functions, because if you're algebra two, you should be doing quadratics right now. Um, I need some help with like factoring. I need some help with fractions and translations and everything give me a call. It's because I actually tutor, right? <laughs> Everything from pre-algebra all the way up to college algebra. So uh, let me share as soon as I get my thing. So let me get rid of this so I can have all of this fun stuff. So here is my, so many buttons. I know it's just, it's so, it's so important. There's just so many buttons right now. So if you take a look right over here, so you can contact me through Facebook and also Instagram, the same thing, ACG Math Tutoring. And if you want, you can also go to my YouTube channel, which I'm going to show at the very end. We have a couple of comments. So let's see what we got. Yes, Miss Donna, that was a lot. <laughs> and a matter of like, I'm just trying to do it in one spell. But if anything, if anybody, you know, Tatiana, if she ever needs anything, she can reach out to me. 
but I know everyone's good at that and she's really good at that part. So we don't have to worry too much about it. But for the most part, if you didn't understand and if there's some things like, yeah, can you do that again? Go ahead and comment. Go ahead, go to my Facebook, go to my Instagram and also go to my YouTube channel. Now through my YouTube channel, there's about a good 64, yes, 64 different videos that will take you through the whole foundation of Algebra 1, kind of leading and teasing a bit for Algebra 2. So if you're like, look, I can't afford tutoring right now, you've got that as an option. I want everyone to feel that they can do math. I want them to build up their confidence and I want them to be able to make connections. And if you can't make a connection, go ahead, I'm here to help. And that's basically the main part of all the things that I do. I really want to help, okay? So again, you can go to my YouTube channel and it's ACG Math Tutoring. Just type that up in the search and I should pop up. Take a look at some of the videos. If you want more of a one-to-one -one, or maybe even a small group of like two to four, I don't wanna do more than four because I really want you to understand and feel that you're getting that individual attention. But if you want more of that, go ahead and message me or go to my channel or my website. Yes, I've got so many things, right? You can go to my website and then hit the contact or the connect form and then just fill in your information and then we could do like a meet and greet. So we can figure out that, hey, maybe we're a good fit or if we're not a good fit, I'll at least I will help you try to find someone who can help you. All right, because we're not in this alone. I, I mean, everyone says we're doing this together and everything, which is all fine and good, but you need the assistance and you need the assistance now because the first quarter is almost over. Some people finished um, tomorrow. Some people are finishing the next Friday. And before you know it, it's Thanksgiving, Christmas. After Christmas, boom, that's second quarter. Then you got March, April, boom, that's um, Easter <laughs> or spring break. I don't know what they're going to call it now. Um, and then you got a few months, boom, you got nothing but testing. And then after testing, it's summer again, right? Real quick. And I always say, once you get to October, that's about it. So for the most part, this was a joy to me as promised. I'm not doing more than 45 minutes. This was a lot, but if you do need the assistance, please reach out. You can email me at acgmathtutoring at gmail.com. You can go to my website, which is acg.tutoring.com. And you can actually go to YouTube channel and Facebook, which is whoop, ACG Math Tutoring. <laughs> no matter what, it's always the same. All right. So hopefully you guys are all right. I'm going to send you more of my information and please stay well. Take care. Mm -hmm.